Hey, it's Art. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be discussing pre and de emphasis filters and how we can use them to shape the tone of our instruments alongside other effects in our music production and mixes. Let's hop into the digital audio workstation and get started. All right, here we are inside of Logic Pro. Now, pre and de emphasis filters were originally introduced for FM radio broadcasting and vinyl mastering as a way to enhance the signal to noise ratio of the higher frequencies. These processes would introduce a lot of noise, especially in the higher frequencies, and so a pre-emphasis filter would boost those frequencies in order to combat the worsening signal-to-noise ratio. And then the de-emphasis filter, whether that was at a radio receiver or on a vinyl record player, would effectively have an EQ curve that was the exact opposite of the pre-emphasis filter that would bring down those frequencies so that they weren't overrepresented while also not having noise in them due to the pre-emphasis filter. So that is a little bit of history on pre- and de-emphasis filters. That is not how we are going to be using them in music production. Rather, we are going to take this concept and use it to affect the tone or shape the tone of instruments inside our mixes and music production sessions. And so you can see here on this track, I have a synth and then I have two Pro Q3s right here. I have my pre-emphasis filter, which is a tilt filter with a center frequency or corner frequency of 1000 hertz and a slope of 20 dB, and then a de-emphasis filter right here at the same center frequency of 1000 hertz and at an opposite slope of negative 20 dB. And so the great thing about the Pro Q3 in this instance is that it is nice and transparent. So here's the synth without these filters. And with so very much the same. And I'm just realizing now that I kind of ripped off uh, the island, I think, by Pendulum with this little melody and chord structure I have going on there. Shout out to Pendulum. But the main idea here is to insert a pre and de emphasis filter and then insert effects between the two so that these effects will work on a filtered signal, which will change the tonality, particularly of distortion and compression effects, anything that adds harmonics or controls the dynamics of the signal, because it will be affecting a filtered version of that signal. And then the de emphasis, of course, is to equalize those out, so to speak, so that we don't have too much high end information of that track. So in the case case of saturation and distortion, the harmonic content will be produced based on this filtered signal rather than on the entirety of the signal. And then in compressors, we actually won't be triggering as much of the low end will trigger more so based on the high end, which will shape the tone in different ways, which we'll get to momentarily. And then of course, re-equalizing it with this de-emphasis filter. If you'd like to read up more on this and 99 other of my favorite music production techniques, I do have a series of PDFs. They are free for you. They will be the first link in the description box down below. You can sign up to my newsletter and I'll send them to you right away if you're interested. All right, so with that, let's actually get to demonstrating pre and de emphasis filtering. We already had a listen to the transparency of the Pro Q3 in this instance. I will leave a link to the Pro Q3 and all other third party plugins that I'll be using in the description box down below. And now we can start actually putting effects between the pre and de emphasis filters. So let's start off with the Saturn 2, my go to saturation plugin. And we have a nice warm tape here, and I've got the drive up 100%. And so without the pre and de emphasis filters, this is what this sounds like on the synth. And so the saturation is going to be producing harmonics based on the entirety of the signal, which has a lot of nice low mids, I would say, frequencies. Now, if I was to engage the pre and de emphasis filters, the saturator right here, the Saturn 2, isn't going to be processing as much low end and it'll actually be processing more high end. And so the harmonic content that it produces is going to be different than if it didn't have this pre emphasis filter. So it will sound a little bit different. It may sound brighter and it may not produce as many low mid harmonics as a result. Here it is with the pre and D. And without. With. 
so the low end sounds a lot clearer to me while there's still that saturation and sort of sparkle in the top end in this case. Now, I'm not going to state that pre and de-emphasis filtering is going to enhance the tone of your instruments, but it will give us a few different looks on what we can get out of our tone shaping processes, such as saturation here. So it can be a worthwhile strategy to have in your toolbox, but it is by no means a fix all. I would encourage you to experiment with it, but not to rely on it entirely. Let's move on quickly to the free clip here. This is a clipping plugin from Ven Audio. I just picked this up. I think it's a great plugin. We have a bunch of different clipping options. Let's go to the soft clipping Quintic right here. And again, if we have the pre and de-emphasis filters engaged, then there's going to be less low end triggering any clipping from this plugin. And then if I take them off, there's going to be more low end. And because clipping is only going to affect the peaks of the audio, we may actually get more clipping without the pre and de-emphasis filters because the low end energy often has more energy or higher amplitudes than the top. So let's have a quick listen here. Here it is with the pre and de-emphasis filters. We're getting some nice soft clipping here. And now without. Drastically different because again, it's got that low end energy that's actually surpassing the clip threshold or the clip ceiling. With. Almost no clipping there. That's another thing to take into account, especially with more dynamic style processing or dynamic distortion, like clipping in this case. I quickly want to go over before we move on to a bass element rather than a chord or pad element, which we are working on now, just how pre and de-emphasis filters won't really alter the sound all that much of time-based or modulation effects because these processes aren't really adding new harmonic content, nor are they controlling the dynamics all that much of the signal. And so this reverb, the little plate from Sound Toys is going to act upon a filtered signal right here, and then the reverb and the dry signal are going to be de-emphasized with this filter. It's really not going to change the tone all that much. And so we can have a quick listen. Here it is with pre and D. Without. With. Very little difference. And the same can be said with chorus or other modulation effects. Here's the Arteria Chorus Juno 6 based off of the Juno synth with the pre and D. And without. So very similar. Let's move on to more of a bass style sound. The synth bass right here. This is just a simple sawtooth based sound out of Serum. Sounds like this. Again, we could have a look at a pre and de-emphasis filter. This time I have the pre-emphasis and de-emphasis set at a center frequency or a crossover frequency of 500 hertz with a slope of positive 10 in the case of the pre-emphasis filter and then negative 10 in the case of the de-emphasis filter. So here it is with the pre and de just to show the transparency of the Pro-Q3. Without. Now let's bring in another instance here of the Saturn II. Again, I have it on warm tape and I have the drive all the way up. And now what's interesting here is we are acting upon a sawtooth wave, which naturally has every single harmonic in the harmonic series. And saturation effectively adds new harmonics to the signal based on the harmonics that are already there. And so a lot of these same harmonics that are there to begin with are just going to be boosted by the Saturn II. I have an in-depth video on all of the basic waveforms and their different harmonic contents. I'll leave a card to that up top and a link to that video in the description if you're interested in learning more about basic waveforms. But here is the sawtooth bass with the Saturn all the way up. And now with pre and de-emphasis.
And so in the pad that we had a listen to previously, the pre and de-emphasis filtering almost cleaned up the low mids and added a little bit of top end. But in the case of a sawtooth bass like this, the pre and de-emphasis filters actually add more low mids to the sound. And so the tone shaping capabilities of pre and de-emphasis filtering are vast. And sometimes they're a little bit different based on what you are sending through them and what processes you're actually putting between the pre and de-emphasis filters. So again, this is by no means going to make your track sound better, always A, B them in the context of the mix, but it is an interesting way, I think, to get more sonic interest or more tone shaping out of your tracks in the mix. So that is a quick example of sawtooth waves. And before we go into a full session where I will demonstrate this and its use in an actual mix or an actual production session, let's quickly go over some drums. So I like demoing drums because they have a very wide range of harmonic content, a lot of frequencies from the kick drums up to the cymbals. And in this case, I'm using the trust Superior Drummer 3. This is my go-to drum virtual instrument. And once again, we have our pre-emphasis filter and our de-emphasis filter. In this case, we have a corner or crossover frequency of 600 hertz and a slope of 10. You can adjust these to your taste and actually fine tune any tuning by adjusting the crossover and the slope, the de-emphasis in this case, negative 10 and 600 hertz. So the drums are gonna sound the same with or without these processes. And now let's have a listen to the drums being driven pretty hard by the Saturn II warm tape without the pre and D. A lot of distortion on the kick drum and those toms, those low end instruments. And now if I was to engage the pre and de emphasis filters, we're gonna get rid of a lot of the kick and tom energy going into the Saturn II. And we're going to increase the amount of cymbals and that top crack of the snare going into the Saturn II. So let's have a listen to how this affects the tone. Versus without. So a completely different tone out of the drums in this case, and this could be straight out of a virtual instrument, or this could be a drum subgroup if we were in a real mixing session. So that is saturation. And now if we turn on a compressor, you see that I just have the vintage VCA, which emulates a SSL G-Bus Master Comp compressor. I have these controls dialed in, auto gain off. This is what it sounds like when it is being fed by the drum group without pre or de-emphasis filtering. So you see that the snare is giving it the most transients. It has to work the hardest on the snare. But we're getting about negative six on the toms and the kick. And now we're gonna feed more cymbals and less kick and toms into the compressor here with this pre-emphasis filter. And then we're going to de-emphasize it as well. This is what it sounds like. Without. So it's almost as if there's more energy when we have the pre and de-emphasis filters engaged. And you see here that the compressor isn't necessarily working any less hard, but it is giving a little bit more power in the case of the drums. Now this is kind of similar to adding a high pass filter on the sidechain signal of the compressor because we're effectively reducing the amount of low end that is triggering the compressor. But of course it is very different because we aren't actually altering the sidechain itself. We are altering the program and therefore the sidechain and this compressor. I have a video going into more detail on sidechain compression. I will leave a link to that in the description box down below if you're interested in checking that out. And now one last thing before we get into the production session is we can actually switch the locations of the pre and de-emphasis filter. So this goes pretty far away from the original use case of pre and de-emphasis filtering for FM radio and vinyl mastering, where we're actually going to, in this case, reduce the top end because this is coming before the processes and actually boost the low end and then the de this filter is going to have, again, that opposite effect. So we're actually going to boost the top end and bring down the low end in our de-emphasis filter in this case. And so in the case of the compressor, we're gonna be driving it with a ton of low end and the compressor should really crush the toms and the kick. This is what this sounds like. Now without.
So because there's a lot more low energy and I'm not doing any makeup gain here, the compressor is actually working harder, applying more gain reduction to the signal when it has been boosted primarily in the low end by this pre-emphasis filter, so to speak. We can also have another listen to the Saturn II here. This is really going to distort the low end. And now without the pre and D. And with. So major differences in the overall tone of the drums in this case. If you're liking this video thus far, I would encourage you to hit that like button. It really helps out small channels like this one in the YouTube algorithm. I greatly appreciate that. Let's hop into the production session now. All right, here we are inside one of my production sessions for a song tentatively called Pacific Sun that I'll be releasing at some point in 2024. And I have this simple synthesizer made in Serum. It's based on a sine wave. I'm not sure I actually have any effects on it. No. Nope. So a sine wave with a little bit of sync by itself. It sounds like this. So just playing some arpeggios in the mix. And then of course I have the trusty Pro Q3. And in this case, I'm actually doing it in opposite. So here is the pre-emphasis filter, which is actually boosting a lot of the low end. I have the crossover frequency at 422.42 Hertz. That's awfully specific, negative 12 dB. And then I have my de-emphasis filter, which is actually in reverse. And here I have the same crossover frequency, 422.42 and plus 12 dB in this case. Here's what it sounds like with both of these turned on. And without. So again, very transparent. And in addition to these pre and de emphasis filters, I also have the Nolly Archetype. This is an amp simulation plugin. I really like sending synthesizers through guitar amps, whether that's out of my interface into my guitar amp, mic up the guitar amp, go back into the interface, or much more simply to just run it through a amp simulation plugin. I find a lot of the amp sims on the market now are just as good, if not better than actually miking up. In this case, I have an Orange Crush 35RT. Great sounding amp, but a lot easier to use something like this. And this is what the synth sounds like by itself, just through the archetype Nolly, no pre or de-emphasis. <laughs> a lot more bite, a lot more grit, and a lot brighter of a sound out of this synthesizer, which is acting as a lead instrument in the context of the mix. So now let's have actually a listen to the synth in the context of this production. I did say mix. This is not mixed by any stretch of the imagination. I'm still producing it, but here is what it sounds like without the pre and de-emphasis filter. with. Sticks out a lot more and really takes up its role as the lead instrument. Without. And with. So I hope that you can take pre and de-emphasis filters and utilize them in your music production and mixing efforts to help shape the tone, especially of your distortion and compression effects. If you'd like more music production techniques, especially niche ones like this, I would encourage you to subscribe here to the Mighty Microphone YouTube channel. And also, if you've made it this far in the video, there will be another video on this end screen of another music production technique that I think you'd really dig. So click on that one and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.